Archaeologists later discovered this had exposed over a million years of ancient human habitation, including the oldest human remains in Europe. Nearby, on the crest of one of the hills, they also found the entrance to some caves. To explore them took years, but it has been worth it. They have discovered a labyrinth of chambers and corridors reaching far inside the hills. At the end of the labyrinth is one of the most inaccessible archaeological sites in the world, a treasure trove of human fossils they call the Pit of Bones. This is the entrance to the whole system. The pit itself is very far from here. It is a long way, and in some places you have to crawl. It's a difficult place to work. Today, it takes half an hour of walking, crawling, and scrambling in the dark to reach the 50-foot vertical shaft that drops into the pit. But it took almost 10 years for the site to give up its secrets. We started to find a small pieces of human bones, difficult to recognize at the beginning because they were very fragmentary. But so many tiny fragments made them think they were on to something big. Even without talking to each other, we started to think that maybe there were down there skeletons. As bone after bone came out of the pit, they realized they had not one, but many complete skeletons. We have around 30 complete skeletons, half a million years old. And this is absolutely unique. These are the skeletons of the ancestors called Homo heidelbergensis, one of the earliest to populate Europe. But why were so many complete skeletons collected in one place? Juan Luis Arsuaga believes they were put there intentionally by their kin. Half a million years ago, the Pit of Bones, now deep underground, had an opening to the surface. Perhaps Homo heidelbergensis dropped the bodies into the pit in a sort of primitive burial. And there is evidence it may have been ceremonial. Along with the bones, Juan Luis found a single artifact hand axe made of pink quartz, a mineral which must have been brought from a long way away. The team called it Excalibur, after King Arthur's famous sword. They believed it was an offer, the first symbol ever found. If this is right, here were beings with complex minds, capable of symbolism, and belief. Half a million years ago, in these European populations, there was planning, there was consciousness, there was a human mind, and the, there was also symbolic behavior. We used to think these qualities belonged only to us, Homo sapiens, that the earliest evidence for them was in the painted caves of southern France just 30,000 years ago. But the extraordinary finds at Atapuerca may have pushed the beginnings of that mental evolution back almost half a million years. Homo heidelbergensis would continue to evolve, eventually becoming the species who would populate Europe, the Neanderthals. Of all ancient humans, the Neanderthals were the closest to us. Their brains were slightly larger than ours, 
Their short, heavy-set bodies helped them survive repeated ice ages. They were hunters, living off the big game that roamed the edges of the great ice sheets covering Europe and Central Asia. When Neanderthal fossils were first discovered, Darwin had yet to publish his theory of evolution. The idea that modern humans had descended from more primitive forms would generate furious controversy. This is the skull of Angus II. It is the first Neanderthal fossil ever found on Earth. It was discovered at the end of 1829. But back then, people were not happy with the idea that this could be a human being like us. Many claim that the Neanderthals were just diseased, misshapen humans. Then, as evolutionary ideas took hold, people wondered if they were the missing link between us and the apes. If we go back to the, the beginning of the 20th century, Neanderthals were seen as sort of ape-like creatures. But since then, hundreds of fossil finds have revealed their physical similarities to us. After the, the 70s, uh, there was a, a so-called rehabilitation of the Neanderthals, so we tend to see them in a, in a more uh, human way. But did they think and act like us? Today, the remains of a young boy who died 100,000 years ago are helping researchers penetrate the mysteries of the Neanderthal mind. The Meuse Valley in Belgium. It was caves and rock shelters here that gave up the very first Neanderthal fossils 150 years ago. Today, they are revealing deeper secrets of the Neanderthal world. For over 20 years, Michel Toussaint and Dominic Bonjean have been excavating a cave called Sladina. One millimeter at a time, they've been sifting through the debris that once filled the cave. Their painstaking work paid off. I've had the chance to be present when one of my students have discovered the Neanderthal child. And when we have come there and see that this piece was, we were so surprised we couldn't believe it. What they uncovered was the jawbone of a young boy, 100,000 years old. Nearby, they found more fragments and teeth until they had almost a complete mouth. Since then, they've been trying to reconstruct the life of the boy from Sladina. They know the woodlands and caves of the Meuse Valley were his home. He probably lived here with his extended family. Already, he would have been learning from his father the skills to become a hunter. But what else can we infer about his way of life? His bones are full of clues. And new techniques are allowing scientists to decipher them. 